Welcome to Horticulture Plant Science. So botany versus horticulture. Horticulture is the art or practice of garden cultivation and management. This includes food and ornamental plant material. It comes from the Latin hortus, guard it means garden, colera means to cultivate. Botany is the study of plants, including their structure, properties, plant taxonomy, and biochemical processes. Taxonomy is the branch of science dealing with the description, identification, nomenclature, and classification of organisms. And the evidence for taxonomy include the external appearance or morphology, the internal structure or the anatomy, the ecology or habitat for a plant, cell structure and components, chemical components, and finally DNA. With classification, uh, you're developing and using a system for categorizing things such as plants. In this case, we've got our mosses, our non-vascular, and things like ferns and other seeded plants are considered vascular. It includes a hierarchy of relationships. Each level is a rank. The members of each category are called the taxa or taxon. So family is the rank, and in this case, the taxon is rosaceae, or the rose family. So the first person to start classifying plants was Theophastrus, and he's considered the father of botany. And he classified plants based on their form herbs, shrubs, and trees, annuals, perennials, and biennials. But the person that is really responsible for the nomenclature that we have is Carl Linnaeus. And he named, classified 12,000 plants and animals, and they're based on shared similarities, and it's kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And we'll talk about each one of these. So it's governed by the International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and Plants. And a Latin binomial consists of a genus and a specific epithet. So in this case, it's Acer palmatum for Japanese maple. And Latin names are either italicized or underlined. Genus is na a noun and is capitalized. And you can see I've got it in italics here as well as underlined. Specific epithets are nouns or adjectives, and they're in lower case. And so here's our Acer palmatum again. So the specific epithet is palmatum. The entire species is Acer palmatum. Sometimes you'll see that second word called species, and that's a misnomer. It's a specific epithet. So sometimes you'll see binomials that are followed by an author citation. And so Acer palmatum was actually named by Linnaeus. And this can change. If the plant name changes, uh, this will change. So infraspecific names follow species rules. So rhododendron, digronianum, subspecies acushimanum. And if you've taken broadleaf evergreens from me, or you will, you will find out quickly that this is my favorite rhododendron. So they're lowercase, italicized, or underlined. And these include subspecies. These are any taxon below the rank of species. So subspecies is in here. And these are different uh, morphological variations that have been observed and usually have their own geographic distribution. Variety is uh, less of a magnitude than subspecies. There's some geographic distinctness. Um, but these distributions may be adjacent. And then form are just trivial variations occurring among individuals of any population. So cultivars are capitalized in single quotes and not italicized or underlined. So uh, cultivar is a plant variety that's been produced in cultivation by selective breeding. And in this case, the cultivar is Osmanthus heterophilus variegatus. So it's a variegated form of Osmanthus heterophilus. So here's the formal naming system. It's two parts. First, the genus. Second, the specific epithet. Genus plus specific epithet is the species. And then the names are Latin or Latinized. And for the most part, when you're talking about plant classification, 
Horticulturists stick to family, genus, and species. So in the plant kingdom, there are over 250 species and that they're included in uh, kingdom plantae with smaller and smaller divisions based on characteristics such as whether they're reproduced by spores or seeds, what size they are. A phylum uh, divides it in this category best based on whether or not they produce seeds and whether they're vascular or non-vascular. Class are plants that are divided into two types of class, classes. We've got angiosperms. These are plants that produce flowers and then gymnosperms, and these plants do not produce flowers. These are, think about uh, pine trees. And then within class, you've got a subclass of dicotyledons. These are plants with two seed leaves. And then there's monocotyledons that are plants with one seed leaf. Order is a group of related plant families, and this is based on vegetative structures, reproductive structures, and the names of orders end in A-L-E-S. And then finally we've got a family which contain, contain genera that often resemble one another with broad characteristics, usually having to do with the flowers, sometimes determined by DNA sequencing. They're doing this more and more. And the family usually consists of numerous genera, though some only consist of one. And the family name ends with A-C-E-A-E. -E -E. So Rosaceae is the rose family. So within the family, the plants are grouped together uh, usually by similar flowers. The rose family plants have five or multiples of five petals and then they have many stamen and you can see we've got apple, plum, strawberry. The next level of plants is the genus and they share similar characteristics. It's more precise than family. So genus for laurels, plums, cherries, etc. is prunus. This is always capitalized and it's always italicized or underlined. So the species, as I mentioned, consists of a genus and a specific epithet. And again, it's a noun or adjective that follows the genus. The specific epithet often describes the plant. It's lowercased and it's italicized or underlined. And in this case, we've got Acer macrophyllum. And macro is big. Phyllum is leaf, so big leaf maple. So here's our taxonomic hierarchy. We've got our plant A, angiosperm, family, order, family, genus magnolia, species magnolia grandiflora, and then the common name is southern magnolia. So subspecies are a particular group within a species that have branched off usually due to geographic isolation. Abbreviated subspecies is SSP or S-U-B-P-S-P, and again, subspecies names are lowercase, italicized or underlined, preceded by the abbreviations above, and here we've got Acer tetaricum subspecies Janella. This is Amer maple. A variety of plants is a group of plants within a species that has one or more distinguishing characteristics, and they can produce true to seed and so you'll see VAR when you write out the name. And so it's written in lowercase, italicized or underlined, preceded by that abbreviation. And here we have viburnum, placatum, variety, tomentosum. And then form or forma, this describes just sporadic variations. Uh, you know, a white flowered plant and a normally purple flowered species, also italicized and underlined after abbreviation F. And so in this case, we've got our pink flowering dogwood, which is Cornus Florida Forma Rubra. And then here's our cultivars. They're selected for a particular attribute or combination of attributes. They're clearly distinct, uniform, and stable. They only 
reproduce uh, with the same characteristics when they're propagated asexually, they do not come true to seed. And the cultivar names are capitalized in single quotes. So here we've got Almus glabra camperdownii. And then we have hybrids. There's interspecific hybrids that occur when you've got two different species that cross. And so here we've got a lowercase x before the specific epithet, Osmanthus x Berkwoodii, and it's a cross between Osmanthus delavii and Osmanthus decorus. And then we've got intergeneric hybrids. This doesn't happen very often, and this is when you've got two plants from two different genera that are crossed, and you're going to have a uppercase X in front of the genus. And one of them is Fats heterolysii, which we'll have on our broadleaf evergreen list. And that is Fatsia japonica and Hetera helix crossed. Why you would do that, I don't know, but here it is. So dichotomous keys are used to identify plants. You answer a series of questions about the characteristics of the plants you're trying to identify. It's basically a process of elimination. So you match the characteristics that best describe the plant you're trying to identify. You may have seen these. We've got uh, needle versus non-needle. And uh, if you decide you're going to, it's a needle, you're going to go to 2A or 2B and so on and so forth. So gymnosperms are non-flowering. The seeds are exposed in open structures such as cones and leaves. Gymno means naked, sperm means seed. They do contain true root stems and leaves. Examples of these are conifers, cycads, and ginkgo. Angiosperms are flowering plants, and flowers are grouped are a group of modified leaves used for sexual production, reproduction. And the seeds are found within this uh, ovary that protects it. And uh, these also contain true root stems and leaves. An example are roses, lilies, oaks, maples, etc. So here's a cycad on the right, and then a pine cone on the left. And ginkgo, this, you know, this looks like fruit, but it's basically just a seed coat that's fleshy. And here's a classic angiosperm. We've got our tomatoes.